My soul proclaims the greatness, the greatness of the Lord. My spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. For he has looked with mercy on his lowly servant girl. And from now on the world will call me blessed. For holy is his name, holy is his name. Give glory and honor to his name. Well, good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to our Sunday morning worship on this Sunday the 30th of August which is the 12th Sunday after Trinity. I hope you're all well and it's wonderful that we can be together albeit online to share in our worship this morning. So before we begin and our worship begins in our prayer booklet on page 12, before we begin shall we just have a moment's silence. Being a Christian is not always easy, but we serve a master who loves us so much that he was prepared to share our human nature, live among us and suffer and die for us. That love is what inspires us to follow Christ and to come together in our worship today. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, and also with you. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognise God's presence with us now. As God's people we have gathered, let us worship God now together, across the miles yet joined. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, our first hymn this morning, which we shall sing together, is I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say.
Christ made the ultimate sacrifice so we can know forgiveness for our sins. So in the light of Christ and in a moment of silence, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. We say together, Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins, restore you in his image, to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let everything be said and done in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through Jesus Christ. Sing psalms, hymns and sacred songs. Let us sing to God with thankful hearts. Open our lips, Lord and we shall praise your name. Our first reading this morning will be brought to us by Dee. Our second reading is from Jeremiah, chapter 15, verses 15 to 21, taken from the New International Bible. Lord, you understand Remember me and care for me. Avenge me on my persecutors. You are long-suffering. Do not take me away. Think of how I suffer reproach for your sake. When your words came, I ate them. They were my joy and my heart's delight, for I bear your name, Lord God Almighty. I never sat in the company of revellers, never made merry with them. I sat alone because your hand was on me, and you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unending and my wound grievous and incurable? You are to me like a deceptive brook, like a spring that fails. Therefore, this is what the Lord says, If you repent, I will restore you, that you may serve me. If you utter worthy and not worthless words, you will be my spokesman. Let this people turn to you, but you must not turn to them. I will make you a wall to this people, a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but will not overcome you. For I am with you to rescue and save you, declares the Lord. I will save you from the hands of the wicked and deliver you from the grasp of the cruel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading this morning is from the book of Romans, chapter 12, beginning at verse 9. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honour. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. 
Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take, though, what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, shall we now sing our next hymn this morning, which is Come Down, O Love Divine. Our Gospel reading this morning will be brought to us by Richard. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. <clears throat> and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any of you want to be my followers... Let them, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them <clears throat> if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone 
for what they have done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death, not taste death, before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In Rome, it's possible to visit the Mamertine prison, which many claim is where Peter was detained before his execution. The apostle is supposed to have been kept in an underground cell there. There was no door to this chamber, so prisoners were either lowered in or simply thrown in through a hole in the floor from the roof above. This underground dungeon was dug into the rock and would have been a cold, damp and dark and a rather deeply depressing place, which being close to the main Roman sewer must have smelt horrendous. Now, after his stay in this horrific dungeon, Tradition has it that he was crucified upside down. Now, whether his prison was here or not, few doubt that Peter was held captive somewhere and died for his faith. Despite all he suffered, however, he was not a naturally brave man. The Bible famously describes him denying Christ repeatedly because he was afraid that he would be arrested like his master. In addition, church tradition has it that he fled Rome to avoid the persecution that was happening to Christians at the hands of Emperor Nero. It is claimed that he found the courage to turn back and face death when he saw a vision of Christ heading the opposite way into Rome. Today's reading offers us further evidence of Peter's struggle to grasp the connection between following Christ and suffering. Now, in last Sunday's Gospel reading, we heard how Peter received high praise from Jesus because he recognised him to be the Messiah, that long-awaited deliverer. Jesus declared that Peter could only have received this revelation from God and that he would become the rock that the church would be built upon. Yet in a short space of time, Peter went from being praised by Jesus to being rebuked and called Satan. Peter may have realised that Jesus was the Messiah, but he had misunderstood what kind of Messiah he was. Like others of his time, he expected their deliverer to vanquish Israel's Roman oppressors, not to be tried, tortured and die at their hands. Jesus' talk of a suffering Messiah shocked and angered Peter and even provoked him to take Christ aside and reprimand him. But Jesus, however, rebuked him back. In his eyes, Peter was acting like Satan because he was tempting him to follow an easier path. Jesus knew that he had to suffer and die in order to bring salvation to the world. Christ also warned Peter and the other disciples that those who followed him would also suffer like him. However, he encouraged them that despite the heavy cost, following him was worth it and they would be rewarded on his return for all that they have gone through. People are often encouraged to become Christians through promises of a better life, promises that faith brings peace, strength and healing. While all these things are true, if we leave the message there, we are in danger of giving a false impression that being a Christian is always easy. This is misleading and will always create false expectations. Today's passage makes it very plain 
that far from promising a problem-free life, there is a cost to following Jesus. Being a Christian may mean that we are mocked, misunderstood, or even persecuted. Discipleship involves making difficult and very often costly life choices. This may seem discouraging, but although living for Christ can be hard, well, it is also fulfilling. We can also be encouraged that Jesus promises to reward us for our sufferings on his return and that he understands everything that we go through because he too suffered. So we can talk to him about our struggles and be assured that he is right there beside us. Whenever we are worried that we are not up to this challenge, well, we can look to Peter. He failed frequently and lacked courage often, yet he went on to be a great church leader despite his weaknesses. God knows we are not naturally strong and that very often we all lack courage. But what matters, what matters most, is our willingness to serve the Lord. For as Peter's life shows, God will help us with all the rest. Amen. Shall we now affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, every day of our lives is an invitation to follow you in all of the ups and downs, joys and sorrows which we are likely to meet on our journey. We come before you with our prayers knowing that you love us more than we can possibly imagine. We pray for our bishops, Robert, Nick and Jackie, as they challenge us to a more compassionate lifestyle, that their words will not fall on closed hearts and will find a generous response. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for governments engaged in making major decisions which will affect the lives of those whom they are called to serve. We pray that their decisions will be guided by wisdom and justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the people of California as they battle devastating wildfires that emergency workers might be kept safe and that those whose lives have been turned upside down by the fires will find the support and courage that they need at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the people of Belarus in their search for freedom and democracy. We pray that their crest will be without bloodshed and violence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for children returning to school, for their teachers and families, that they will be safe from infection, that the new academic year will be one of hope and joy, and that those who need specialised care and attention will find it. We also pray for young people who are preparing for further education or who will be joining the workforce, that their new paths may be joy-filled and supported by wise mentors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
we especially pray at this time for all those who may be facing unemployment or job insecurity. We pray and hope that they will find positive solutions to their current difficulties. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God of all mercy, we pray for all who face difficulties in their personal lives, those who are sick, the bereaved, those with problems in their families, in their friendships, in their neighbourhoods or in their workplace. We pray especially for those who are ill at this time, for Jeff, Pete, Richard, Georgie, Graham, Margaret, Claudia and Steve. Heavenly Father, may they all find comfort, healing and peace in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in a moment of quiet, let us pray for our own personal petitions. Loving Lord, hear our prayers which we make in the name of your Son Jesus and the Holy Spirit, who lives and reigns with you now and for ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And our collect for today. God of constant mercy, who sent your Son to save us, remind us of your goodness, increase your grace within us, that our thankfulness may grow through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together now the prayers at the bottom of page 15. Faithful God, may we who share in this time of worship Glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, our salvation and hope, who reigns as Lord now and for ever. Fill us, good Lord, with your spirit of love, and as you have fed us with your presence, so make us one in heart and mind, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. And we say together the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. For God has said, I will not leave you or forsake you, so we can confidently say, The Lord is my helper, I will not fear. It is the Lord who goes before you, he will be with you, he will not leave you or forsake you, do not be dismayed. Please God, we ask that we can meet together in church again soon. Amen. Our third and final hymn this morning, which we will sing together, is Father, hear the prayer we offer.
over this coming week as we continue to stay alert, to control the virus and to protect the NHS and to save lives. Well, my prayer for you all will continue to be that you will all stay safe, stay well, stay connected and stay firm in your faith. Amen. Shall we now bow our heads as we pray for God's blessing upon us all. May God give you the courage and the strength you need to live for Christ this week, wherever you are and whatever you are doing. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and those whom you love and pray for, now and forever. Amen. Our service is now ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Whoa.